A trio of Fed officials weighing in today on the battle against inflation, and all three making it clear they do not favor any rate cuts in the near term. What does Roger Altman of Evercore think? Well, we're going to find out because he's joining us now on Closing Bell Overtime. Roger, a real pleasure to have you on, I think, at an important hey, time. Um, what is Roger Altman's view of what the Fed will do and what the Fed should do? Well, you can't ignore the data and the the prints on inflation that are on the, the hot side. Looks like the PCE, which is the Fed's favorite metric, is going to come in around the mid threes when we next see it. And uh, if you want immediate rate cuts and a lot of them for 2024, that's uh, that's a, a negative result. But uh, I think the bigger story uh, is really the remarkable strength of the U.S. economy. It's just amazing. I looked this up before uh, this afternoon's uh, discussion with you. Six months ago, just six months ago, a majority of economists thought the growth rate for this year, 2024, would be about 1.3 percent. Now they're seeing it as almost double that. The Fed itself thought the unemployment rate uh, for 2024, and already I think now, at this point in the year, would be a full percentage point higher than it actually is. And you know, since 2019, the U.S. economy in real terms has grown 8 percent through the pandemic and so forth. We're the only economy in the world that's now bigger than it was before the pandemic. Yeah. Europe over that period has grown 3 percent. So, yes, I understand that the market, of course, is focused on the very short term and when the Fed will first cut, whether there'll be two cuts or three cuts in 2024 and so forth. If I were managing money, I'd be focused on that, too. But I think the bigger story is the amazing resilience of the U.S. economy. And and that's why and that's why valuations are high and stocks putting aside this week, are doing well. Do you have a, a view on why the U.S. We went from hard landing to soft landing to no landing, and I was wrong. A lot of people were wrong. Now I'm kind of thinking we have this edge in energy costs or energy prices are far less than most nations. If you're a German manufacturer, you're not building anything ever again in Germany. You're going to build it here, be based in Germany, but you're going to build it here. We're already seeing that. I think that's one reason the U.S. economy has done well. But is it still just leftover money from the pandemic savings? Is it just people don't care? They're jacking their credit cards up? Why? How? I think, it, Brian, I think it goes way beyond the excess pandemic savings, although there still is apparently three to four hundred billion of that uh, uh, in, in the pockets of or the bank accounts of upper income Americans. But look, our labor force has grown strongly, uh, unlike the rest of the world. And you need uh, that part of the supply side to grow if you as a whole are going to grow. That's a huge plus. Oil and gas production, as you said, after all, we're a net, we're a, a net exporter. Uh, that's a plus. Productivity growth, labor productivity is up 1.6%, I think, over the last two years. That's impressive. There's a long list. Uh, but everything, by and large, is going right in the U.S. economy. And yes, inflation is proving sticky on the downside. Parenthetically, I think it usually does, although we haven't had a period of high inflation for a long time. Mm -hmm. But that's not out of line historically. Uh, but I think the reason the, the market is, generally speaking, quite high and multiples are quite high, three turns or so above long-term historical averages, is because the U.S. economy is so strong. And we, we should... Uh, feel fortunate in this country that it's the case and it's out the economy is outpacing every single forecast that one could have pulled up from six months ago or nine months ago arguably the soft landing already has happened 